Hello and hello again. This is Tibblewinkles and we are in Belladonna. Which is about a game where you play as a reanimated corpse girl. Trying to find reason in life, I guess. I don't know much uh, beyond that, so uh, let's have... Well, let's start the game. Before this point in time, my mind is tabula rasa, yet I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. Well, that was pretty self explanatory. Uh, one moment. Had to check if I was uh, recording. Okay then. So it seems like I can click about. My uh, very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. I wonder what I am. Huh. I wonder if you can find yourself in a mirror. That way you can see uh, a bit more of uh, what you are. But here we go. I guess she has no name right as of now because she hasn't figured out what it is. Journal There's page. a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. Okay then, I'm going to read this. It is with shaking hands and heavy heartbeats I gather before me the instruments of my last desperate attempt. I find myself on the threshold of my toils, a turning point, for should I fail tonight, I doubt I shall find this strength and resolve to continue. At my feet now lays the lifeless remains of my beautiful Belladonna. A few hours ago, my wife was alive and well, and now she has been cut open, dissected, altered, and artificially reconstructed. From the second she gave up her final breath, I have worked tirelessly to preserve and prepare her corpus, that I might infuse a spark of being back into her lifeless limbs. This is the final test of all my research and experimentation, the past five years, the complete revivification of a human being, body and soul. The anxiety I feel is agonizing, but I cannot let it hinder me from carrying out what I must do. For my own sake and for hers, this procedure must not fail. In my feverish dreams, my wife appears as such a lovely creature, so far removed from this creation before me. Her cheeks, once so full of laughter, are now pale almost to the point of transparency, with the skin stretched so thin over the cranium it threatens to rip at any moment. Her eyes would shine like the night sky, but now are empty, watery and yellowish. I have to cling to my conviction that she will regain her former grace and vitality once she is brought back to the realm of the living. Her eyes will light up with the flame of life, a Promethean flame stolen from the fairy gods. From this night on, man shall be the master of his own destiny, and God shall no longer be above us. As I write this, as I write the engines of life are finally heating up. The last of the preparations are coming into order, the crucial moment is ever approaching. The time has come. Success! The attempt was a success, as she is alive! Okay, it seems like there's far more things to go and pretty much I'm guessing that all these journal entries are going to be as long as this. Ooh, okay, this is going to be a very lore-ridden game. So, 
You are the reanimated corpse of somebody's wife. Belladonna, so is your name. So let's have a look. Let's have let's just look around. So just to make sure that we haven't missed anything that we can interact with. Okay, let's click on the Iron Maiden. A torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? One of a mad scientist by the looks of it. Books. A lot of natural philosophy and chemistry. Something by an M.W. Shelley. While you still retain your ability to read, that is for sure. Now is not the time. Right, okay, so there's galvanic experiments, whatever that means. It looks like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires. And I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching. And a skull? A human skull or a paperweight. Vial of oil. This oil looks expensive. Let's waste it. Okay, I've got myself something. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. Okay then. Nothing happens. Okay then, sorry there. Okay then, sorry about that. I need something else. Okay, we got the vial and we're going to waste it. And I was about to click on uh, the galvanic experiment and uh, somebody contacted me through Steam. I'm very sorry about, about no. that. Okay, then. Toolbox. Interesting, but no. Okay, okay. Let's, that let's... makes no sense. I'm, I'm trying to pull it back. Oh, you right click. There's okay. a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. Uh, yeah. Let's just see if I can do anything here. I don't know why I thought that would work. Um, I don't know. Screwdriver the skull? Oh, there's the magnet. I love magnets. Okay, let's see if there's anything more. There's a brain, it's a in, brain a jar. in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. Hmm. Probably nothing. It's not connected to anything which would power the brain. Okay, it seems like there's a lot of things we can uh, we can check, and if not, and if we're not careful, we can very easily miss items. Okay, it feels starting to have the same vibe as Discworld, and I'm not very good with games like that. Screwdriver the tank. Interesting, but no. Okay then. I need something else. Oh uh, yes, yes. Okay. What if I Nothing mix the? Nothing happened. I don't know why. A file of oil with the magnet. Work. Okay. Okay, it's time for us to look at the gargoyle. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks like a George to me. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. Unscrew the hinges, yes. That's one way to do the it. screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. And guess what you have as well? You've got a vial Just of oil. some oil on the rusty screws. That should loosen them up. Some oil. Oh, you I'm said free. you said some oil, but uh, you used the entire vial, I guess. Journal page. Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. Here we go. Work is going great. Kept a rat alive for one hour and twenty-six minutes last night. We'll move on to larger mammals within the week. I find my life more and more polarised into two phases. I remember times when I used to climb up and down the stairs like a squirrel each day, but now I spend most of my time, and indeed most of my thoughts, down here in my lab laboratory, only to step upstairs at night to sleep. It is warmer upstairs in the living area, but it is boring and understimulating. Down here is where I make progress, down here is what matters. And as I lay awake beside my sleeping wife, I often wish I was down here with my experiments. Bella Donna grows increasingly distant. Ever since that fateful night when our baby Lucas gave up his last breath, she has lost all traces of her old self. God knows what she is thinking about as she silently gazes into the empty air or restlessly paces back and forth in the great hall. I, at least, 
and working with my grief. I have turned my attention to the science of life and death, and not a day goes by when I do not think of how my son was ultimately taken from me. This is the thought that drives me. In this, the greatest of ambitions, my own son will never return. I have accepted that now, but thanks to me and my work, the cold, ruthless contrast between living and dead will in the future be much softer, maybe even completely erased. My wife, though, has set, um, my wife, though, has let our grief devour her whole. She is emotionally and intellectually paralyzed, it seems to me. All of her creativity and quickness of thought, the wittiness of her speech and the nimble way she used to jump from one conclusion to the next, all those quality that made me fall in love with her in the first place, they have been snuffed out like the flame of a candle. This makes me wonder even more why I bother to go up to her bed every night. The shell in which she has enclosed herself cannot be breached by anything I say or do. It is almost as though she is involved with someone other than me. I feel ridiculous for even writing it down. No, it seems ludicrous to think that Belladonna's disinterest in me is due to her seeing another man. I will not accuse her of that. It is just one of the many strange ideas that seem to appear in my head when I am down here by myself. I am probably just tired. I better try and get some sleep as soon as this rat's heart stops beating. Okay, maybe you just kind of got to the point where you... It looks like someone has been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed, and it was hardly the suit of armor. But why would someone choose to sleep down here? Didn't you read the journal entry? Is this going to be as long as the last one? More writings from the lonely doctor. Curse my miserable existence, the hopelessness from which I see no conceivable escape. I cannot rid myself of the feeling that there is something of utmost importance that I need to take care of, but that is, um, but that it is not yet time, that something beyond my control needs to be completed first. I carry inside me a sensation of waiting, yet I cannot name the thing I am waiting for. In the meantime, all I can do is work. I do make progress but at an excruciatingly, excruciatingly slow rate and nothing I will accomplish it seems to nothing I s accomplish seems to calm the anxiety in my head I sleep only a few hours every night and cannot remember my last hot meal I am feverish and jump at the smallest of sounds what is it that I am missing I am spending more and more time down here with my research I only occasionally go upstairs to sleep in the master bedroom. Most nights I sleep, if at all, in a makeshift bunk I have constructed in the cellar. It is not as comfortable, but my research is at a point where it oftentimes requires my constant attention, and comfort is not my priority. I'm certain I am advancing ever closer to a significant breakthrough, but it is as though I am powerless to control, or even affect the rate of its occurrence. On top of this, I cannot read I cannot rid my mind of the idea that Belladonna has forgotten me and taken a new lover, a new man in her life, someone more lively than me perhaps, someone who can still look at life with joy and optimism, to match her own by grave tragedy of unaffected humour. Yet who would that be? I can remember friends we used to have in my memory. Our wedding was a crowded and festive event, but it has been years since this castle has seen any visitors. I have no time for social obligations, and Belladonna seems to have given up on everything that is pleasant in life. I suspect the castle is, an, is in an undesirable condition as well. Almost all of the staff has left us. We are down to one girl who dusts the cupboards and lights the fireplace, but I don't see much of her either in these days. For all I know, she might have be gone as well. There cannot be possibly a man in Belladonna's life, apart from me. Okay, these are really long. I think because of such, I'm going to uh, 
another locked door. Let's take a peek through. Sure. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. I wonder what I can invent to retrieve it. This is brilliant, but how will I get the magnet out there and then back again? I need longer arms. I wonder if I can get a refund on this stitched together body of mine. Oh yes, brilliant. I like your humor. Okay then, it seems like we're gonna need some sort of rope, but that is not the rope we're looking for. This is not the rope we are, we are looking for. Okay then, let's see. Can we find rope or can we find... Okay, let's There's a stick. A long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. Okay, stick Look, and magnet. I can attach the magnet to the end of this stick. Okay, I want I want to have a look at what what we can do with the suit of armor. Okay, we can't go here. Okay, that's fine. What a dedicated knight to guard a damp dungeon like this. Maybe he was demoted. Maybe he likes the dark. Maybe he's Hello, okay. Roland. Okay, she was just saying a lot of random things and I accidentally clicked through all of it. Sorry. Okay, time to get that key. Another locked door. Let's take, Let's a, peek take a peek through. Yes, and we are going to grab the magnet on the stick. Let's hope this works. Aha! Just as planned. I got the basement key. And we can go. Let's unlock this door. Let's unlock this door. Um, kind of wish that sometimes these things are automatic, but there we go. Journal page. More letters. Has he figured it out yet? I see now that my suspicions have been well grounded, albeit aimed in the wrong direction. Belladonna is not seeing another man. She is seeing a woman. I am convinced that it must be that maid, Claire, or whatever her name might be. She and Belladonna are up to something, I'm sure of it. And to think of all the hours I'm stuck down here, caught up in my dreadful work, leaving them free to roam and left to their own devices upstairs. Of course they have found each other, only living things in this whole castle besides me and my weak long rabbits. They have it all figured out. When I come up at night, they act all innocent, keeping their mutual secret from me as a playful game. But as soon as I descend into the laboratory, they are in each other's arms again. But what can I do? The progression of events are beyond my control. Just like my work, I slave away in a ghoulish endeavour, me making progress every hour but never getting anywhere and simultaneously Belladonna is slipping away from me further and further for every night and yet nothing ever changes. Should I confront them? Storm up there hoping to catch the two in the act? Take back the life that was mine, the wife that was mine? No. I have no reason for my silly suspicions, no evidence whatsoever. Merely a thought stuck in my brain refusing to leave. So I remain passive, as always, and each new day is one w more where I am unable to make an action, unable to change my wretched situation. Nothing happens. Okay. A couple of cogwheels on the floor. They must Brilliant. have fallen off the mechanism when the door slammed shut. I wonder if I can put them back. Okay, dude. So I was about to say that, uh, okay, rectangle cogs, medium gear looks like it goes there, and small cogwheel. Okay, everything seems very automatic. It seems like this guy has been uh, getting what is very sim uh, similar to uh, what is called cabin fever. The doctor Journal. is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? Okay, then there we go. It is clear to me what I must do. I am now convinced and beyond any reasonable doubt about my wife is unfaithful. 
they still hide it very well. Her and that housemaid. But, but my logical mind tells me there is no other explanation. For countless hours I have pondered on this situation, and the more I think about it, the more certain I become that my judgement is correct. These countless hours are hours I could have spent thinking about my work. It is clear to me that I will never be able to fully concentrate on the puzzles at hand as long as my thoughts keep creeping back to my wife and her new lover. This is the very reason that my research is progressing at such an agonising slow, agonisingly slow pace. So it is clear to me what I must do. Bella Donna herself is the person who I want back into my life, so I cannot punish her. That leaves her lover, the young maid. She is unimportant, and it is she that must go. I could fire her and throw her out of the household, but I fear this would not resolve anything. The two of, the two of them would still know of each other, and they could write secret forbidden love letters or meet up at secluded rendezvous. No, it is clear to me what I must do. I must get rid of the maid for good. A plan is already taken form in my head. In a, great, in a greenhouse out back I keep a lot of plants and herbs. One of the specimens I have is called Deadly Nightshade, an interesting plant with many medical uses, but is renown, renown comes from the fact that its extract is lethal already at small doses. Preparing a powder from this poisonous plant is not at all problematic, getting the victim to ingest the dose will be a challenge, but I expect to have ample opportunity. They are not aware, I know the truth, and thus suspect nothing. This maid will fall ill, and within a short time she will die of seemingly natural causes. No one will be the wiser concerning the true circumstances of her demise. Deadly Nightshade is merely the common name of for this plant. Its scientific name is Atropha belladonna. The symmetry strikes me as beautiful. The poor girl strayed too close to the belladonna, and that would be the death of her. Okay then, there we go. So, what else do we have? It's a mortar, and a pestle too. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. A okay. big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. Well, there's uh, another two behind you if you're willing to look, have a look at there. Journal page. The story is so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. Okay, this one's a bit shorter. I can deal with it. My wife took the wayward maid's death harder than I had expected, further confirming my suspicions that they were indeed having a secretive love affair. She is passionate and irrational, raging all day and crying all night. Where a few months ago the cold shroud of silence lay over our house, now there is the wailing shrieks of bedlam. One should think that she would be used to dealing with the grief of lost loved ones by now. However, in all sincerity, I don't believe she was ever as affected by the death of our only son as I was. I also suspect that she might have guessed I had something to do with her lover's demise. If she wouldn't talk to me before, now she yells and barks at my every movement. I hardly leave my, my, my nah. I hardly leave my laboratory these days. I even have a small bed down here, where I sleep the few hours when I'm not working. All the while she prowls around upstairs like a hungry tiger, and attacks me over futile nitpicks as soon as I poke my head out. What happened to the love we shared when we married? We were going to live together in her inherited castle. We were going to have children together. Now all I get is abuse and a cold bed in the basement. All I want is for things to go back in the way they were before all this. Okay, that was much shorter. A dead body. Oh, well, I guess that is the scientist. It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? There must be some clues around. 
There's Strings. something in his pocket. It's a small, delicate key. He kept it in the pocket closest to his heart. I wonder what it unlocks. The body is still warm. He cannot have been dead for much longer than I have been alive. Did he have to die for- For me to live? Okay, The kind missing of candlestick. And it seems to be the murder weapon. I am allowed to pick it up and the journal page. There's a letter page. in his hand. His final words are a clue left by the killer. How can you write so much in your dying breath? <sighs> Over the course of a sleepless night, I have fought through my next course of action from every possible angle, for it is indeed time for me to take action again. Even with the troublesome maid out of the way, I see little chance of getting my old Belladonna back. If anything, she is worse now than ever before. But I have an idea, one that kept me awake all night. I have come very far in my research by now. I can now fairly predictably create living creatures that are stable enough to not spontaneously die again. This is consistent through my different species of animal. I have noticed something peculiar though. The returned creations seem strangely vacant and sluggish. It is as if, although the body is brought back to life, the soul is forever lost. The creation is perfectly functional and responds to stimuli, just as if it was truly alive. But the mysterious spark of will seems to be missing. I know no other way to describe the phenomenon. This bothered me before, but now I cannot help but think that this might suit my needs. Isn't it precisely the strong will of my wife that is causing all my problems? There is no need to be poetic with flowers this time. I am in no short supply of lethal, um, of lethal substances in the laboratory, and poison suits my needs as well as it, as it leaves no physical trauma in the body. I will still need to make incisions in the corpse to replace internal organs with clockwork parts but stitching together surgical cuts is much simpler than trying to repair unhealed bodily damage. The integrity of a visage is a priority. To extinguish Belladonna's current life and give her a new one, to bring her body and mind back, minus soul and free will, a beautiful obedient automaton, a mechanical doll with all the functionality of a woman, but who is responsive and does what she is told that, that, my f dear future reader, would be, would truly be something. I think of it, um, I think it is high time I tried my revivification process on a human subject. Okay, I've got a tiny key and a candlestick and uh, another journal page. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. Am I not Belladonna? If you had asked me just for a few, just a few years ago about my future, I could never have fathomed my life today would be as it is. So strange a path has the twists of fate set me upon that I wake every morning bewildered and be like a small child I expect anything and everything to happen during each new day. The night my planned future snapped out of joint and took a whole new direction was the night when my son Lucas died. I married Dr. Wolfram von uh, Trowerslosh in the spring and we loved each other deeply back then. How young we were, he was an educated gentleman from the University of Ingolstadt and I have first assumed we would get a flat in Vienna. Instead he convinced me we should live in my family's old castle and accept our roles as old fashioned nobility to the little village down the hill. We moved into the castle with a staff of 30 servants beginning the task of breathing life and joy into the majestic halls. At this time I expected to live out my life as a lady of the household minding the servants and indeed raising children. Before long our first son was born and shortly after that he once again departed. I was devastated of course but Lucas had been sickly from his first day and even though my husband 
had blocked out the possibility from his mind, I was not entirely surprised when it happened. Nonetheless, it changed us. I believe Wolfram blames me for that. What happened? That he thinks it was somehow my fault. He retreated into his laboratory in the old dungeon and started doing unholy experiments and God knows what. Those were dark times. Instead of a household and a child to take care of, I now had no guests, practically no husband and no child. Everything I thought would occupy my time was gone and all I could do was grieve in solitude. The castle staff left one by one until there was only a, a handful still here. My existence was meaningless and I spent my days doing nothing. But I dealt with my grief in my own way and in times the claw of melancholy began loosening their grip on me. <clears throat> Sorry there. In my own way and in time the claws of melancholy began loosening their grips on me. In so many ways I have Clara to thank for that. It's hard to speak with a stuffy nose. It's an old clock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Oh yes. Yes. In a way it feels like that um, this revived Belladonna is experiencing everything again with a child through a, the mind of a child. And it's very interesting. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations and the library would have to be infinitely large. That's very deep. A stuffed raven atop a bust of Pallas Athena. What a cheerful decoration. Let's call them Annabelle and Dupin. Right, righto, righto. Look at all these old toys. Wind-up dolls, music boxes, and mechanical trains all around. I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's, before he got into the whole corpse business. Yes. Portrait. Another portrait. It says her name is Francisca Canosa, an old relative, no doubt. But I wonder how she relates to the von Trauerschloss family. Okay, there's a ladder here. I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. Candlestick. Interesting, but no. Screwdriver. That makes no sense. I need something else. Okay, okay, yes. I'm not going near that ho Okay, there's a mysterious item. I'm not... Okay, the cat is not happy with us. Okay, we need to find a way around it. I sit down and write a story. But with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. Yes. And then there's another journal page. Ah, uh, jolly. Okay, I can't go to the ladder because of cat, right? I'm not going near... Okay, okay. Cat is in way. Let's have the another read. handwriting. I know it well by now. Months has passed, and I must indeed conclude that the procedure was a success. The new Belladonna is certainly calmer, friendlier, and more docile. She, gad she gladly keeps me company in the laboratory nowadays, and she is polite and pleasant in everything she does. One is tempted to describe her demeanour as lobotomized, but no, when I ask her questions, she will answer in a clever and articulated voice, and she is responsive to all kinds of stimuli. Verily, I have gotten all I could ask for. That troublesome maid is gone, and Belladonna is back with me. Compliant as ever, her behaviour is extremely... Um, her behaviour is exemplary. Our lives are returning to what that Id idyllic pa past there. Our lives are returning to that idyllic past I had thought lost in all aspects except one. No child giggles in his halls, but my research is proceeding rapidly and a question presents itself. Who needs a womb to create life? I have made an unexpected observation, a side effect of the unliving condition, the household cat 
a black beast and once Belladonna's loving pet, has gained a great mistrust for the latter's new form. A disquiet has fallen over the animal, and he will not go near the creation. Why is this, I wonder? Why this lack of trust, this sudden and ferocious hatred? Belladonna's appearance seems to me not much unlike what the cat before so fondly gravitated towards, but evidently the beast perceives a difference. As a species, the cat has popularly been associated with witchcraft and mysticism. The eyes do indeed strike one as remarkable. Is it perchance so that the feline oculus is capable of peering into a human soul and spirit? And so, when faced with the created belladonna, is distressed by the lack thereof. Okay, it seems like they lived for a little while before he just died. I wonder what went... what happened. This room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid. No matter how fantastic. Yep. This room looks completely abandoned. Yep. Journal page. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. I, Belladonna, must think, remember, fingers, hands, write words, words, hate. Oh, you began to remember what happened. Okay. That is definitely not uh, pleasant, to say the least. Okay, where else can I go? Okay, the candlestick, screwdriver and key. Haven't found anything of use. Okay, there's a bottle of milk. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. No wonder in this cold. Right. Journal page. One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. Clara Steber was one of the most several... Uh, was one of the several chambermaids we hired when we moved into the castle shortly after the marriage. In the warm light of recent events, I feel as though I could pick her out of a crowd already at this time, but I suspect that the truth is that she is, was just another servant, one of many, and I didn't pay her close to the attention I know she deserves. I now know she deserves. The time following the death of Lucas is hazy and, and unclear in my memory. I know I spent most of my time in an armchair in the living room, staring out of the window I know now that this must have been a difficult time for the staff as well. My apathy left them without purpose as more and more of the household was shut down. Soon the cooks and stable grooms began abandoning what they wisely identified as a sinking ship. As more and more of the staff left the castle to seek employment elsewhere, there was less and less reason for the rest to stay and the household was quickly decimated. But throughout all of this, young Clara never left my side, and she gradually shouldered more and more of the household responsibilities, making it her task to take care of me and nurse me through my melancholy. It was her loyalty and industriousness when everyone else left that finally brought me back from my condition. And, indeed, her love as I now sit down to write, it has been a long, unbroken chain of happy days. Clara and I have the whole castle practically to ourselves, and nothing to do but to enjoy our lives and each other. We sleep in a new room every night, cook our own food, and have picnics, uh, have picnics under tables in front of the fireplace. We have no incentive whatsoever to uphold convention and norms when this house has become like a secure pocket inside the rest of reality. In truth, this touches on what I treasure most in Clara. Neither of us reap any concrete benefits from our union. 
neither financial or societal. There is no embedded purpose of producing heirs. Our relationship exists solely for itself and it is its own reward. I am already adopting her adorable habit of naming inanimate objects. The castle is not quite ours however. Wolfram still lurks like a ghoul downstairs and occasionally emerges and spends a night up here with me. We have little, we have little in common anymore. In fact, he is like a completely new person. His mind is vacant, his stare distant, his thinner than ever before and shivers with cold. Clara jokingly suggested that we might have him declared mad and sent off to institute, an innocent idea in her mind, but with some planning, this might eventually prove to our, be our surest path to finally reclaiming this old castle for us alone. Wow, there is so much text going on here. This must be the family cemetery. Yet, baby Lucas rests in an urn in the dining room. Why is that? It says, Snowflake the pet cat. How cute. The stone is so old and the name is worn off. Wait, there's an open grave. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. Wait. Belladonna? I have a guess. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. Okay, let me... Can't... Let me guess. Belladonna opened a grave, saw Clara Steber, went into a ballistic madness and decided to go... I uh, hit the... Scientist? Let me guess. General Page. Know. A great god. Why did I not even... Uh, why did I not then expire? Why am I here to relate the destruction of the best hope and the purest creature of earth? It was mere days ago at the peak of our bliss when Clara fell ill. She complained of headaches and tiredness, so I made a bed for her and laid her down to rest. For the next few days I cared for my companion just as she had cared for me and nursed her with all my love and compassion. We believed it was just a passing sickness and it would be over shortly. Each morning we thought she was getting better, and each evening we realised she actually gotten worse. And today, when I entered her bedroom, she was there, lifeless and inanimate, thrown across the be bed, meh, thrown across the bed, her head hanging down, and her pale distorted features, half covered by her hair. In horror, beheld the body of Clara, my love, so lately living, so dear, so worthy. I rushed towards her and embraced her with ardour, but the deathly languor and coldness of the limbs told me that what I now held in my arms had ceased to be the Clara whom I had loved and cherished. Alas, what foul curse lies in my gentle touch? I have lost my only child to the darkness, my husband to the devouring madness, and now my lover has departed this world as well. Is my love truly as poisonous as my ominous name? To the greenhouse. Okay, we have frozen milk, but I have reason to go back and see that, see to the cat. Okay, I am just going to go to the... Can you... You you don't find your way automatically. I need to click yourself closer to the dinner room. Okay, let's see. There's a fireplace, there's molten pestle, there's a bowl, and there's an urn. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand-painted. Oh, great. The label says Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss. So this is the man who brings the dead back to life. He looks as though he would have been handsome once. I don't know why I thought that would work. 
Okay, that candlestick is gonna do other stuff. Okay, brilliant. That makes no. Th well, nothing makes sense in this game. Okay. I'll let it stand by the fire for a while. It's thawed. The milk is now in liquid form. Okay, let me mix the milk with the, the bowl. Milk pours easily. Brilliant. So we have a milk bowl, and we're gonna go to the cat. Okay, then let's go to the cat. Hello, cat. And we're going to put a bowl down, and somehow it's going to help us. I'm not going near that. Okay, so I can give delicious milk to my fearsome adversary, but why would I want to do that? This creature has nothing but scorn for me. It would just take my milk and keep attacking me afterwards. Unthankful thing. I'm not going near that makes no sense are, are we going to we are going to poison the cat aren't we look a perfect sphere let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect well anyway that's all the time I have for this session so we kind of learned that this could possibly be Belladonna but we don't know because we haven't found the corpse of Clara yet or what happened to her. Well, we do know that she died of poisoning, but um, we don't know anything else other than that. Well, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If I did a good job, give us a thumbs up. Any thoughts, please leave them in the comment section down below. And I hope to see you in our next adventure. Bye-bye.